Okay, students, so for today, what we're going to do is we're going to have some practice problems for electromagnetic induction. All right, so to start us off, um, we had in a previous lecture, we went through both Faraday's law, which is this formula up here, which will it'll tell us how much uh, electromotive force or potential difference, remember that this acts as a voltage source, okay, will be generated or induced whenever we have changing flux through any window, right? Any window here, some wire. So the way this works, of course, remember if you remember that if I change the amount of magnetic field, hold on a moment here, there you go, sorry, if I change the amount of magnetic field, then uh, I'll have some kind of counter effect that will try to counter that change. And in that countering, it will produce its own electric field and its own uh, charge will be, will be pushed through. So for example, if I uh, increase the amount of magnetic field, so if I increase this, then I will have a counter effect that will make um, magnetic field opposite to this to, uh, to go against this change. And then of course from here, this will create current around or electric field around it, okay? So let's go ahead and go through this as an example. So let's say that I have 500 loops of wire. So starting off right away, I've got 500 loops of wire, okay, right here in a square coil shape. And um, we're gonna just go ahead and start with, you know, some labels here. Let's say it's a square, so both the length and the width are both 0 0.2, okay? And then what I'm going to do through this coil of wire is I'm actually going to be increasing. I'm going to increase the magnitude of this magnetic field over time by 1.2 Tesla per second, okay? So this right here, every second, my magnetic field is going to increase by 1.2 Tesla per second. Okay, so to describe this with Faraday's law, we start, of course, with this form of the formula right up here. This is negative n. If you remember, n is the number of loops. So you're just going to compound this effect a certain number of times. And then this is the change in flux over time. Okay, flux can be given by this formula right here. Okay, this will be my formula for flux. Now, so here I started with the formula, just like we have here. And for flux, I can put in this formula, but I don't actually need sine theta or whatever this is. I just need the, I need to know that this is perpendicular. This is perpendicular to my field. So in this case here, you know, it'd be sine of 90 degrees, which is just one. So I end up with B times A, okay? So this B times A right here, we can fill in for flux. So my flux is just B times A, where B is my magnetic field, right? And A is the area of the loop. Okay, now what we can start doing is we can start taking out, for example, A is constant. My loop isn't going to change over time, only my magnetic field. So this can come out of this little derivative. We can take this out and then I end up with A on the outside. And then my magnetic field uh, here, this term can stay as this uh, change in magnetic field over time because we have this already here on the right. We have a value for this. So as an example, very quick example, just to go through to show how we use this formula. Uh, we have here, we've got 500 loops of wire this n is 500 loops, and I have my area here is, um, it comes from, I've got a side of 0.2. Now, to get my area, this isn't it exactly, right? To find my area, this is actually going to be length times length, right? Because it's a square. So it's going to be 0 0.2 squared, which would give me 0 0.04, sorry, 0 0.04, okay? So, uh, I can just go ahead at the stage, we're pretty much ready to plug everything in. So this should give me negative 500 times 
0.04 times, and then here, every second, my magnetic field will change by 1.2 Tesla. Okay, it'll increase. Don't forget here, we have a little negative symbol. Uh, this is just telling us, of course, that this is going to be uh, countering whatever we're trying to do. We're trying to increase the magnetic field by 1.2 Tesla every second. So this is going, whatever this effect is going to try to counter this new change. So if we put this into our calculators, we should get here uh, about 24, negative you know, 24 here um, for my EMF. Now, if you remember, EMF, this plays the role of a potential difference of a voltage, right? And it has the same units. These are 24 volts. So 24 volts are going to be generated in this wire only by increasing my magnetic field, okay? So, um, so we have this, but one more thing that I want to determine here is what is going to be the direction of the I, of the current? So what is going to be the direction of my current? Um, I know that I'm going to generate a potential here somewhere. It's like I'm going to hook this thing up with a battery somewhere. Uh, but what direction is my battery? Is my battery going to face, you know, like this way, or is it going to face this way? We still need to determine this, okay? So the way that we do this for Lenz Law is first, we determine what's actually happening over time. Well, over time, more magnetic field downward is being produced, okay? So what do I need to counter this? Let's make it something very visible here, maybe red. I need to counter this with this, where this is my magnetic field induced, okay? We'll try to counter this new change. This new change is trying to increase the amount of downward magnetic field. So my counter magnetic field is going to be upward. It's going to try to cancel this out. And now from here, you can use your right hand rule. So for your right hand rule, your thumb in the direction of your magnetic field, okay? So point your thumb upward, and then you'll curl your fingers around you should curl your fingers around and what you should get here, okay, let me try like a green or something, will be, your your fingers should curl around like this, where it will be sort of, uh, if you're looking down into the loop, it'll be counterclockwise, right? So it'll be counterclockwise, so what I'll actually get here will be, my current will go around like this, right? So again, just remember, the direction of your current comes from your counter magnetic field, not from what you're actually doing. Uh, if you're increasing your magnetic field, the counter magnetic field that opposes you, that's the thing that creates the current. So here, this is in the counter clockwise direction. And that's it.